In this video, I want to go over the bubble sorting algorithm, and it's the simplest of all sorting algorithms. So say we have an array of integers, such as this array right here, and we want to sort them in ascending order with the bubble sorting algorithm. The way we do this is we scan this array from left to right, and if any two integers are out of order, we swap them. And we continue to do this until the previous traversal of our array required no swappings of integers. Okay, So we'll go through this example right here. We start traversing through our array, and we start with index 0, or the integer 5. We check, is 5 less than or equal to the integer right in front of it? Well, it's not, so what we have to do is we have to swap these two integers. Now that they're swapped, we continue traversing throughout this array, and we go to index 1, or the integer 5, and we check, is 5 less than or equal to 8? Well, it is, so we don't have to swap anything, we can move throughout our traversal. So we get to 8. Is 8 less than or equal to 5? Well, no, it's not, so we have to swap 8 and 5. With our iteration, we get to 8. Is 8 less than or equal to 6? Well, no, it's not, so we have to swap these two uh, items in our array. So now that we've completed our first iteration throughout our entire array, we have to check, did we swap any, any two integers? Well, we did. So that means we have to traverse this array again and perform these operations until we don't have to swap any uh, two integers. But before we even go continue with this example, I want to point out to you that at the end of each iteration, the largest number will be in its correct position. So if you look at 8, 8 is now in its correct position. This is why we call this algorithm bubble sort, because after each iteration, the next largest item bubbles up and moves to its correct position. Okay, so now we're just going to continue on with this uh, example. We go back to the beginning and we check. We we'll start out with 2. Is 2 less than or equal to 5? Well, yes, it is. So we can continue to 5. Is 5 less than or equal to 5? Yes, it's equal to 5. So we move on. Is 5 less than or equal to 6? Yes, it is. And we get to 6. Is 6 less than or equal to 8? Yes, it is. So now we have traversed this array without performing any swapping. That means that this array is now in ascending order, and we can return this array. So now let's talk about the time complexity of this <clears throat> algorithm. In the best case scenario, when our array is already sorted, we only need one single iteration. So this is going to be O of 1 or constant. In the worst case scenario, our array is sorted in reverse order and we need O of n iterations. So O of n. In each iteration, we need n comparisons. Well, more accurately, n minus 1 comparisons. So say we have four items, we only need three different comparisons for that iteration. But So for the comparisons, we're just going to write O of n. O of n. So if we get to the total, and we look at the total, for the best case scenario, this bubble sorting algorithm is going to run in O of n, or linear time, so O of n. And in worst case scenario, it's going to run in O of n squared, or quadratic time. So for the coding section of this tutorial, we're going to start out by creating a function, and we're going to call it bubble sort. And we're going to pass this function our array, and this array is the one that needs to be sorted. And then we need to create a boolean function and or a boolean variable and we're just going to say is sorted is equal to false and this boolean variable is going to keep track of whether or not our array is sorted. So from here we need to create a while loop and we're going to say while is sorted is equal to false. And the reason we do this is <clears throat> This is saying, while our array is not sorted, we're going to continue on with this while loop over and over until our array is sorted. OK, so now that we're in our while loop, from the get-go, we're just going to assume that our array is sorted. So we're just going to say, is sorted is, e is equal to true. And then from here, we need a way to iterate throughout our array. So we're going to use our a for loop. And we're going to say for i 
in range of the length of our array and then minus one and the reason we do minus one is because if you think about back to the chalkboard when we were iterating throughout our array we compared each um, integer to the one right in front of it so when we get to the the very next to the last integer we just compare it to the one right in front of it okay that's that's the reason why we do uh, the length of array minus one so now that we're inside traversing through our array what we need to do is we need to check if the two numbers um, are in the correct position so we're just going to say if array of i which is the one on the current iteration is greater than array of i plus one and this is just saying if the current iterate uh, the current integer that we were on is greater than the integer right in front of it what we're going to do is we're going to use a helper function and we're just going to swap those two uh, integers okay so we're just going to say swap and we're going to pass this function i i plus one which is our two integers and the array that's in it from here we have to also set is sorted equal to false so we're just going to say is sorted is equal to false and the reason we do this is because if you remember back to the chalkboard the way we could tell that if the array was sorted is we check back to our previous traversal of the array and if we performed any swaps then it wasn't sorted so if we're in here and we had swapped uh, any two integers that means that this array is not sorted and we need to use go through this while loop again okay so that's the reason we did that and this is going to continuously perform until we don't have to swap anything and if we don't swap any uh, any two integers that means is sorted is equal to true and we can just return array okay so we're actually done with uh, this function the last function we have to just create is our helper function swap okay so we're just gonna say define swap and we are going to the parameters that this is going to have is i, j, and our array. Because this, this function is going to swap uh, those two indexes, i and j, and we need to pass it our array. So it's really easy to do this actually. All we have to do is say array of i, comma, array of j. is equal to array of j array of i and essentially that's that's it that's all we have to do so let's test it real quick and we will uh, I'll show you how it works so we're just going to print this function bubble sort and the array that we'll pass it are lists since this is python but we'll pass it some arbitrary integers so 9 2 3 seven six five four three nine 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 uh one hundred and then twelve yeah that should be good and we'll save this and we'll run it and check to see if it worked properly so this current array is now sorted um two three three four five six seven nine 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 twelve one hundred so that is the bubble sorting algorithm. I hope that you found some value from this or learned something. Um, if you did, I would appreciate it if you liked, commented, and subscribed. And I will see you guys in future tutorials.